to another tutorial, this time about vibrato. So vibrato is one of my most favorite things to talk about, to do on the cello, because it is just so incredibly uh, powerful in its ability to help you and your music and your playing to really express the emotions uh, and the feelings that you want to convey. So whether you're playing stuff that has no vibrato, majestic and baroque um, and serene uh, to a very small vibrato. So maybe it's very introspective, uh, maybe it's a little poignant, maybe uh, melancho uh, melancholic with melancholy. Um, perhaps it's a wrist and hand vibrato, it's a little bit bigger. more um, formal, maybe classical, classical in style, just a, a nice general vibrato. And then uh, my favorite vibrato, of course, is the melodramatic, passionate, um, crying, screaming type of situation. <laughs> Vibrato. Vibrato, on a very literal sense, is just the shaking of your fingers. So when you sing, you can sing, uh, if you add vibrato, it's, uh, sorry, I'm not a very good singer, but, uh, uh, so depending on, that's also changing the dynamic level and the, um, the width of the vibrato. So there are many, many different types of vibrato. And when I work with different students, uh, and people, I, I find that a lot of times people don't really analyze or not thinking about what type of vibrato they're doing. They have maybe one general type of vibrato, like, oh, can you, you know, I'm going to play this piece and I'm going to shake my finger. It's not quite that simple because it would be, it's very, very boring if, uh, for example, you sing the, everything the exact same way with the same vibrato. So it's like having, um, a tool chest full of different tools that are appropriate for whatever project you're working on. So for me, I feel like it is very, very important to develop and to understand all the different ranges of vibrato that your body is physically capable of producing. Now, before we go into the different types of vibrato, I want to share with you my favorite practice technique, uh, my little hack of how to strengthen your fingers um, so that they are best set up and prepared for this vibrato adventure. Now, out of the four fingers that we generally use as cellists or violinists or violists or bassists or whatnot, um, the four uh, fingers that we use are fingers one, two, three, and four. Now, out of these four fingers, uh, which one do you think is probably the weakest? This little guy, right? The pinky, just because uh, anatomically he is the weakest finger. So it is very important that we are able to train our weakest finger to be as strong as our strongest finger. So when you play a vibrato on a, on a certain note, and whether you're using finger one, two, three, or four, they should all sound exactly the same. This is a major, major problem that I've come across where um, I do a master class and a student is playing and they're playing their vibrato, but when they play vibrato on the fourth finger, on the pinky, you can really tell the sonic difference because you can tell that their finger is weak. Um, and so what do you do to strengthen the finger? Just like with everything else in practice, it's just repetition, muscle memory, and muscle strength building. It's like going to the gym if you're a bodybuilder, same thing, you just have to practice it over and over and over to the point where your pinky gets a lot uh, stronger. I don't know if you can see it because I'm a little far, but if I, if I take my pinky side by side, this pinky is probably uh, one and a half times thicker than this one because it's been uh, trained and worked out. So uh, my favorite practice technique for um, figuring out to really hear yourself and figuring out how you can make your, your fingers sound the same is this. So we're gonna pick a note. Let's do the G uh, on the D string. So this note. 
So I'm going to do pick a vibrato, general vibrato. <laughs> sound exactly the same so you start uh, on the same playing field right a lot of people when they when they go from their strong fingers one and two usually to the fourth finger it sounds something like this <laughs> weak and they're just trying to shake it um, <laughs> and what that means is that you have not spent enough time it's just time and repetition to really strengthen your pinky and I know it really hurts and it's really annoying and it's boring but all things worth doing are going to be annoying and boring um, so you just have to force yourself to do it so I would recommend um, by starting at least for me, when, when I was developing the vibrato stuff and really working working on strengthening my fingers I was doing two to three hours um, a day at the start of my practice session, uh, but if that's a little too extreme, or if you have time, um, you know, time constraints because you're working or whatnot, you're in school, uh, do at least 10, 15, say 15 minutes a day, right? And just practice by, by torturing your pinky um, to to try to get it a little bit, you know, a little bit stronger. And each day, as you can, you know, you do as much as you can handle. And then each day, if you repeat it, it's it's again, it's going to hurt. You're going to develop calluses, but developing calluses is a good thing because then you won't feel it later. Um, you should have a good solid, you know, pad on each one of your fingers. And also, as these calluses develop, uh, I found that my fingertips actually get wider and harder, which is a good thing, again, because you're rubbing your finger against the strings, and that's very uncomfortable if you have soft fingers. Mm -hmm. If you have a friend who you can ask, hey, can you tell which fingers I'm using, have, their, have them close their eyes, turn around. If you don't, you can just record yourself on your phone um, and then listen back to it afterwards. Uh, and then once you get to a point where it really, uh, you can hear that your fingers all have the same strength, have the same general uh, foundation, then you can start analyzing the different types of vibrato. So in general, how to develop a vibrato, I know there's a lot of other videos out there and uh, um, lessons, tutorials, you know, all teachers will tell you the same thing. And I wasn't going to go over it because I feel like it's pretty basic in its concept. Um, you, you know, you take your finger and you just kind of rotate it back and forth from the pad of the finger and there's really not much I really feel like there's not much anyone can tell you you just have to practice it and eventually your body it's again it's like a muscle memory thing just do it over and over and over and eventually your body because everyone's fingers and hands are different figures out a movement that works for them right uh, and the general thing is to remember to try to stay uh, loose so I like to think of everything on both my bow hand and um, the fingering hand to have this like general roundness, this looseness, right? When I first started playing the piano, um, my teacher back in China used to tell me, "Oh, remember, there's there's like a golf a golf ball uh, inside your palm, right? Not not tight and gripping, but just a loose, soft grip. So just keep everything rounded uh, as much as you can and relax. If you feel like tensing, try to remind yourself to not tense um, and to just keep everything rounded. So with that in mind. If you start uh, playing just a note, and you're sliding up and down, not actually sliding, your finger, the center of the finger is staying in the same place. It's really kind of going from like side to side, but the center is still there. when I started playing the cello almost a year to really learn the basic vibrato and this was before I even realized that there were different types of vibrato um, so don't be too hard on yourself you know just try to practice every day um, with um, with purpose and really spend some time allocate time to really analyze uh, the vibrato and to build that movement uh, muscle memory in your mind so now 
uh, I, to me, the most important part of uh, playing with vibrato is to understand what type of vibrato you are using. Um, I think there are generally maybe four or five types of vibrato. Um, you have vibrato that comes from your fingers, so the movement is very uh, small and tight, and it's mostly from your fingers. Uh, you have a hand or wrist vibrato, where a lot of the movement is coming uh, from, from this area. Uh, and then you have the full arm vibrato, which you can get a big dramatic sound with which is my favorite uh, favorite type of vibrato. Um, so how do you uh, develop those kinds of vibrato? We will start with the finger vibrato, okay? I'm gonna use finger two for this example. So finger vibrato is where really a lot of the movement of the back and forth comes from your finger. You don't restrict your, your arm in trying not to move it because everything is connected and you know, your entire left side is going to be moving um, anyway, no matter what vibrato you do. But just try to focus on how can I get um, a lot of the movement to be centralized to come from the finger. So for me, it, it feels like this. And if you have noticed, and perhaps you already have, um, I do play sometimes with a bit of a flattened finger. And when I was a student and starting out, a lot of well-meaning teachers uh, and people would tell me, hey, that's not right, you can't play like that. Uh, and I absolutely hate uh, any dogma or anything when people are telling you uh, when they don't have the same body structure as you or body composition that you shouldn't or should play a certain way. So everybody's bodies and fingers are different. Uh, so you might be double jointed, you might just have, you know, your, 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 your joints flex a different way. Like Paganini was able to, literally his fingers could come all the way over here because he had a disease that made him ultra flexible. So depending on what your situation is, um, if, if, if it feels natural to you and it doesn't hurt you, uh, that your fingers flatten like mine do, the joints kind of flatten when I put pressure on them, it is what it is. If it works, it works. I tell people if you can play with your chin or your teeth and make it sound good, the, all the more power to you. So uh, a small finger vibrato. <laughs> wrist vibrato which comes from here a little bit more so it's more of a hand movement uh, uh, to me it has a, a slightly rounder bigger sound <laughs> position your fingers in a perpendicular way, like how you would play down here, it gets really restrictive because it locks your shoulder uh, up here and so it becomes a lot harder. You're kind of like limited to a finger vibrato because um, physiologically you're literally locking your shoulder, right? So I found, and again it's up to you whatever you want to do because everybody has to find their own tone and their own style and sound, but what I like to do is that I pull my body to the side, so this is my right side, I'm, pulling, I'm leaning it over a little bit more so that the, the angle of my forearm is less perpendicular and not really parallel, but kind of like um, at this, I don't know what angle this is, 45 degree something angle, depending on what you're playing. So you have more uh, movement here. So this is almost like a full, I would say 130, 140, 50 degree angle, um, you know, kind of this movement here that I'm able to make with my hand. So you can get a much bigger and rounder vibrato sound. <laughs> get um, a big vibrato sound is shifting my body to make it possible for my arm to get that full range of motion even up here and the same thing applies if you move it all the way down I mean it's a little bit weird to play like this uh, in first position but because you don't really have to even if your fingers here you can still get that full movement <laughs> for you, but just to be aware of the fact that, you know, just a slight tilt 
in your arm uh, angle and in how you hold your fingers can make such a huge difference in the sound that you produce. I really hope that these tips were helpful. I really appreciate you guys being here. If you have any suggestions uh, or requests for different tutorials upcoming, please leave them below. Leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Be sure to turn on the alerts so you can be first alerted to new tutorial videos, which I will be doing on a weekly basis in 2020. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. Um, and I wanna give a big, big thank you to all of my wonderful Patreon patrons who without their support throughout the years, this would not be possible. Um, so thank you so much for your generous support and friendship. Uh, thank you to everyone for all of your wonderful comments, for watching the, these tutorial videos, as well as my other, you know, random videos and music videos, performance stuff. Um, please stay in touch with me on my social links. I'll leave it below uh, and I will see you soon. Bye.